Hey, it's your boy C-Rock, episode five. What are you made of with Mike C-Rock, sponsored by Nations Lending, Home Loans Made Human. Glad to be here, excited to be here. Can't wait to talk about this topic because it's had such a big effect on my life and those around me. Um, and I uh, just wanted to, uh, before I get started, thank Nations Lending for the sponsorship of our show and uh, the, the support that they've given me has been um, more than I could have imagined and for my team. And uh, in this during this Thanksgiving season, I just want to be thankful. Uh, I'm grateful for Nations Lending and the team that I work with. And so I just wanted to start off by saying that. So let's get into this topic today. Uh, I want to talk about depression and anxiety and mental mental issues. And don't get me wrong, I understand that there are um, medical issues, chemical imbalances that can cause mental disorders. But I would venture to say, and again, don't hold me to any of this, I'm not a doctor. Um, I didn't sleep at a Holiday Inn Express last night. Um, but uh, I really think that a lot of quote unquote depression and anxiety, if, if it's labeled that, let's put it that way, sometimes it's mislabeled, uh, is caused by the potential that our spirit has inside of our bodies not being reached or not being reached for. And what I mean by that, let me let me paint a little picture here for you. If you've seen these commercials on TV, where there's a puppy dog or a cat and they look really sad and they're playing this sad music and you see it on there and they're really trying to get you to give them some money to help these animals out. But they look like this, they've, they've been beaten down, their spirit is gone, they have no will to live anymore. And I've also, if you've also seen dogs that are rescued, you hear rescue dogs that are rescued from backyards of people's houses that are chained to a tree. And these dogs are emaciated and they're starving and they have no spirit. And a lot of them are mean and angry and sad. And, it's, and, and it happens with animals. And you see that. And so, I want to. by the way, I'm going to name this podcast. I, I believe I'm going to name it Get Out of the Mental Cage. Um, anxiety and depression. Um, th- these animals deal with this when they are treated this way and stuck to a tree or put in a cage or put in a kennel. And their, their potential is not being reached for. They want to get off and run. They want to go play with kids, hunt things, chew on things. Go to the bathroom all over the place. <laughs> Animals want to do those kind of things. Their spirit inside of them is trying to push out and they can't because they're stuck. So I want to relate this like Bob Ross. I use Bob Ross a lot because when we were kids, we used to put on PBS and watch Bob Ross paint the picture. Start out with a blank canvas and paint the picture. Nice little fluffy clouds and some trees over here. <laughs> oh, Bob Ross. I remember watching him and uh, he'd start painting something. I'm like, what the hell is this guy painting? Let me see. Okay, I'm starting to see it now. Okay. All right, it looks good, Bob. That looks good. And then he'd do something with some dark paint and and mess up a nice mountain scene. And I'm like, what are you doing, Bob? Don't do that. And then before you know it, Bob had the picture painted, and it, it all worked. It all worked together. Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm sure some of you listening remember old Bob Ross. Anyway, let me paint the picture for you. Paint the picture on... Um, the, the the potential that we have inside of us, we have a sp- spirit inside of us that our creator put in us and it has a purpose. And again, this is from my experiences. So uh, I'm sure some people will disagree with me and that's fine. And this is what this is for. This is for us to talk about this, but we have a spirit put inside us with potential and it's unlimited potential. The spirit has unlimited potential and we have no, we can't even comprehend what we're capable of. I mean, matter of fact, I've heard studies, of course, we've all heard of 10% of our brains, only 10% of our brains being used. And if that's the case, imagine our spirit inside our bodies, how much of that's actually being used, how much potential we're actually reaching for, how much we're actually using. We have no idea what the potential is. And so when that is limited, your spirit is stuck in a cage or chained to a tree inside your body, inside your mind. And then you feel conflict. You feel depressed, just like the dogs in the cage and tied to the tree. You feel anxiety. You feel fear. 
And that's what I want to talk about today because I think a lot of people, and it may not be clinically proven anxiety or depression. They may just be labeling that themselves or somebody's friends or family or telling them that. A lot of it can be cured by a few steps that you can take to help reach, have your spirit reach for its potential. And when you do that, you'll notice that you don't have time to be anxious. You don't have time to be depressed. What's replaced, replacing those things is excitement and hope. And if we can replace depression and anxiety with excitement and hope, everybody will be a lot happier. The world will be a lot better place. There'll be a lot more production. And that's what I aim to push out into this world. So I'm going to give you a little bit of personal experiences here. And I like to share stories. That's what this show is all about is sharing stories and what I've learned from them and what I use in my future here to get through tough times and break through barriers during good times or break through to the next level in good times. But uh, let me start back in college. Uh, I went to Salisbury. I was fortunate enough to stay close to home, but I had a bunch of friends that we went to college together from our high school. And that could be a good thing and it can be a bad thing as well. And, and a good thing meaning that it's comfortable. And as a kid, when you're leaving home, leaving your parents, it's, it's important to be comfortable um, to an extent. But it's bad because you, 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 you stick around those same people and those people aren't always the best to be around. Now, I was fortunate. They, most of them were. Um, I would say some of them weren't. You know, <laughs> I'll just leave it at that. Um, but uh, we, we went to college together. We had a crew. They called the Cecil County Boys. And we all hung out together. And then we would meet other friends. In the meantime, I played football at, uh, at Salisbury and um, met a lot, of, a lot of good guys on the football team. And uh, that was a great experience for me. But uh, when I went to college, I had potential. I still have potential, but I had, my spirit had potential for something. And I felt this when I was in college that I was stuck. And I went to major in business and finance and marketing. And I went two years and I had all A's, no problems with grades, but I wasn't engaged. I wasn't engaged in what I was doing. And when that happened, I started to lose interest. Then I started to withdraw. I started to get anxiety. I wasn't, I wasn't happy. I was depressed. But the reason for that, and I look back on this and I've analyzed this, is because I had something more inside of me that needed to be done at that moment. And I couldn't do it because I was in college in a phase where I was learning and I was looking around at professors, some of them. And this is just, you know, I'm just being honest with you. I would, I would sit there and think, how can I be taught by someone that hasn't done it themselves? Now it's not always the case. I know there's some professors in, in colleges that have done it, have built businesses. And I always knew I wanted to be in business. I always wanted to make money. I always wanted to be helping someone advance themselves. But I sat there a lot of times thinking to myself, what am I doing here? Why am I spending the money here? I would go back from that once I started disengaging and party with my friends, drink too much, and didn't take it seriously anymore. And I'm, I'm 100% responsible for that. But at that moment, looking back and analyzing, I know it had to do with the fact that I, I, I should have been figuring out how to run a business, how to start a business at that moment. Finding a mentor at that moment, it doesn't matter that I was 18, who cares? A lot of people start started when they were 18. And I think I feel like I wasted a lot of time being at 18 years old in college, going into debt, learning from people that didn't necessarily do it. And again, I'm probably going to take heat for this, but I, this is just me being honest, speaking from my heart. And everything that I've learned about business and everything that I do now did not come from college. It just didn't. Now, I can tell you that I don't know how to do an Excel spreadsheet as good as some people. Um, information systems and IT, I'm, I'm okay with. But, I, but you know what? When you're in a business and you start a business and you start scaling, you add the people that study those things. And so for me, being an entrepreneur, it's important to know as much as possible. I understand that. But I don't need to know that stuff. I really don't. There's people you can hire to do that stuff. And you pay them for their time. You exchange time for money. And let them run that part while you run the entrepreneurial part, run the business, have the ideas, the direction, the vision, and then be able to hold people accountable. 
Those are kind of, and also being able to sell. I didn't learn any of that in college. And I don't think that if I stayed and stayed focused, again, I got good grades, but if I stayed and stayed focused, I don't think I would have learned how to sell. I don't think I would have learned about a vision and goals and how to make them big and unachievable. Everything I've ever heard about goals is to make them reasonable so that you don't get disappointed and that you make progress. And in doing that, you get very upset. You get discouraged because when you do hit the goal, well, usually you fall just short of it. But if you do hit the goal, then you're like, I wasted all that time shooting for this goal. I could have, I could have raised it up two, three, four, five times, maybe 10 times, 10 X and done a lot better. So I didn't learn any of that in college. I learned it out in the real world, in the business world. So I felt that my anxiety and depression, I, my spirit knew that I was, I knew that I wasn't learning what I needed to learn. I needed to make a move and I was very impatient because anytime I want to do something, I want to do it quick and I want it done now and I want to accomplish something. I'm very impatient when it comes to that. And that's, that sometimes can be a bad thing because some things do take time, but it wasn't happening. I didn't want to sit for four years, disengage in, a, in school and then uh, hang out and party with my friends because that wasn't any good. And then by the time I, I, I had uh, dropped out of college with a 4.0. Funny story about that. I went to take my last exam, and uh, Chris Short was uh, in the in the room. We roomed together. Yeah, we've known each other since we were ten, high school, college, and now we work together as business partners. So that's a funny thing. But uh, thirty some years now. Anyway, uh, he uh, he said, "All right, man, good luck with your exam." So I went to my exam. I sat down at the desk with the exam. I looked at it, and then at that moment, I guess this was in nineteen ninety seven or nineteen ninety eight. I said, "I'd had enough." And at that moment, I committed to my future of not going to college anymore. I took the test. I went up to the professor's desk. I slammed it on the desk. And I said, I'm done. And he said, what? I said, I'm done. And I just turned and walked out. I went back to my room. And it was only 15 minutes. And Short was like, what? Like, I know you're fast in things at tests. But, I mean, what, what, what happened? I said, man, I'm done. I'm done. He said, what's the matter? I said, I'm done. I'm tired of being tested. I've had it. I don't, I don't want to do this anymore. And and I remember a story. One of my professors at Salisbury could barely speak English, which is fine, you know. You know, but I'm sitting there trying to take a test or, or class and trying to understand. And I go up and ask a question about something because I didn't understand what he was saying. And then he gave me an attitude. And I said, "This is it, man. You got to be kidding me." So these are some things that happened back then. But so after a few years went by, I was. Uh, Still in Salisbury, and I got a job in the restaurant business. And here I thought, man, I'm going to start learning the restaurant business. I'm going to bartend, wait tables, cook, whatever I got to do, which I did. I started doing all different facets of the restaurant business. And I'm going to open up my re my own restaurant because we had watched Cocktail, Tom Cruise Cocktail, right? And man, man, how awesome would that be? And my buddies and I had started visioning uh, the names of our restaurants. And we had these we had these grand thoughts. We just didn't know how to act on them. We didn't have the data or the knowledge to act on them. And so, um, I, I spent a few years in the restaurant business and, you know, just didn't have enough data to move fast on it and ended up getting into sales. And that's when I met on previous episodes. You hear me talk about Joe. I met Joe. He came into the restaurant and, uh, invited me to come work with him in home sales. Did that for nine years. And I can tell you during that nine years, I was happy first couple years. I did all right. But again, then I got disengaged again and I got disengaged. I felt like my spirit, I felt like, man, I'm, I'm capable of so much more. I knew it inside of me. I just didn't have the knowledge or the data or anything to figure out what avenue to take with it. And so then I moseyed along for another, I don't know, I, I think it was a total of eight or nine years. And I actually even went to Connecticut. I moved my wife and I uprooted. We went to Connecticut because I was looking for an opportunity and I actually opened up my own company. So I did make the move at, at it. I sold my house. It's the craziest thing. I, I, I think we had uh, probably maybe ten to $20,000 in the bank at that point. We picked up and sold our house and moved to Connecticut and rented a condo and opened up a brand new business with ten to $20,000. And that was uh, probably in 2004, 2005, something like that. And we started a business up there and my wife got homesick. It just wasn't a good environment. And it wasn't conducive to success with that being said, because you have to be on the same page with your partner. So I think we were up there for less than a year. It was one of the worst winters in Connecticut. And we moved back. 
And again, just depression, depression, anxiety just wasn't the, it wasn't the right thing, man. I could feel it inside of me. There's something in itching to come out. There's something that needed to be done. I had to accomplish something. So I kept searching. So then after we got back, um, I decided to get into uh, real estate and start selling uh, real estate. And again, that just wasn't, it just wasn't there. I couldn't figure out the, the motive. And I finally found it when we got into the mortgage business back in 2006, I got into the mortgage business. And I finally found something that I felt like I could scale. I could learn it, all encompassing, be better than a lot of people at it, and then start to scale. And that's what happened in 2006. We started, I learned it. 2011, five years into it, decided to start managing and opening up branches. And that's when, that's when my spirit was unleashed. And I became an animal. And I, I just became obsessed at trying to be the best, trying to figure things out and scale the business and then help people help people get to that point and learn from all the stuff that I went through. And so that was in 19, uh, 2011. So eight years ago, we started doing that. And um, honestly, it didn't even end there. Then two years ago, when we switched companies to Nations Lending, the one and only movement um, mortgage move that I made, two years ago, we embarked on a new journey to develop a culture in our company because the foundation on our company prior was no good. The culture was, it was terrible. We had some short-term success, but it crumbled because there was no foundation, which is the culture. And we got into culture building and having a purpose of helping people and why we were doing what we were doing. And so the whole point of this is, is, is a lot of people are anxious, depressed because they have this itch inside of them. And I want you guys, while you're listening to this, for yourself and, and others around you, think about this for a second. Think about if it could possibly be that you're not really clinically depressed or anxious or suffering from anxiety, that you could be just underperforming and not that because you want to. Some people that it is because they want to and they're just lazy, but it could be possibly because of the fact that you have a spirit inside of you that needs to reach for its potential and you're not doing it for whatever reason. And if you're like me, it was because not because you didn't want to, but it was because you didn't know what to do and you didn't know where to turn. And looking back, one thing I could have done differently is I could have sought out what I wanted to do and gotten clear with what I wanted to do, which I didn't do at that time. Having a clear vision and, and, and target of where I wanted to be in like a perfect world. Where would I want to be? Where, where would I be if everything was exactly the way I wanted it? And then write that down and then do it again and write it down over and over again and live it and start living it and figuring out, okay, if I want to he live here, if I want to live this kind of life and have this kind of time off and I wanted to have these things and where I wanted to live, what do I got to do and who do I got to talk to to get to that point? And that's what I should have did. And now I'm doing it. And now I'm encouraging other people to do it. And I'm feeling greater than I've ever felt in my life. Anxiety gone, depression gone. I didn't talk about all these things in the past. Because it's something, and I know a lot of you that suffer from anxiety and depression or feel like you do, you don't talk about it. Because it's embarrassing. You think people will judge you. You don't know what the perception would be. But I can tell you that if you're listening to this and you do have that and you haven't shared that with anybody, feel free to reach out to me. I, I, you know, I'll, I'll tell you some more things that I've been through to try to help you. Again, if it's if it's actually something that's in your brain chemically, you know, obviously you got to talk to a doctor about that. But if it's something that that I went through, and I thought I was depressed or I thought I was anxious, it all had to do with the spirit in my, inside of me, not being able to. It wasn't reaching, and it just didn't have the playbook. And so now that I've gotten clear on what I want to do, and one thing, of course, is our mortgage company getting into a hundred million a month. That's something that we're committed to and dedicated to. We're all bought into it. 30 some employees, we're, we're on a mission and we're looking for more employees to add to this. One person at a time, five at a time, 10 at a time, doesn't matter. If you're on the mission with us and you fit into the culture of what we're trying to do, you're going to help us do it and you're going to benefit. And so that's one thing. This podcast, I'm aiming to get this podcast out to millions of people, tens of millions of people, dead serious about it. And it sounds crazy just getting started, but that's that's my intention. I'm clear now. And now that I'm clear, I feel great. 
And as I'm going on this journey, it's not the destination that I get to and that's when I'm going to be happy and that's when everything's going to go away. As I go through this, the journey is what I'm enjoying. I'm really enjoying this part. I'm enjoying the part that every time I have a, uh, every time I have a win or meet new people from it or I hear from you guys, which I've gotten several messages. By the way, I appreciate all you guys, the direct messages on Facebook, the text messages, the emails, the phone calls. It is inspiring to hear your stories. And I know that some of you don't have the courage to share right now in the group. And that's okay. You'll get to it at some point. But if you just know that it can help people and it will help you to share, uh, you, you, you'll find that out once you do it. But I appreciate all of you guys for doing that. I appreciate you for reaching out. Continue to do so. Please share this with your friends and family. I want to help as many people as possible with this. But... um. Once I got clarity, clarity's the, clarity's the key, guys. Clarity, vision, and goal, and then reiterating it over and over again and committing to it, and then putting a place, action in place, an action plan in place to start achieving it. And it's not difficult. It's really not once you find that. You got to have the roadmap. And once you start talking to people and finding out who the people are that can help you get to where you want to be, help them first. Reach out and say, hey, man, listen, I want to help you any way I possibly can. Whatever I can do to help you, I want to do it. Let me know what it is. And then what happens is you put enough goodwill out there and you put enough help out there. It starts coming back in abundance. And then you feel great. It just does, man. And it, and uh, the biggest thing right now for me that makes me feel the greatest is the impact that I'm having on people's lives. And it's really them having the impact. I'm just trying to get like kind of, you know, you're rubbing two sticks together to get the fire started, get the heat warmed up, and then they jump on board. And then you just got to keep pushing from there. And uh, I'm just, I'm excited about that. And I'm going to, now that I have the blueprint of how to feel good with that, I can share it with others, but also remind myself when I start going through tough times or if we hit bumps in the road, hey man, listen, this is why we're doing this. This is normal. A lot of people, by the way, a lot of people that have success or if you see them out on Instagram or social media and they're having successes and you think that they didn't go through rough times or, or stumble or feel ang- anxiety or depression, you're wrong, 100% wrong. These people, everybody deals with hurdles. Everybody deals with bumps. And I think we'd be a lot better off if they... Sh- Those kind of people shared their journey. Even if they're not on it right now, kick back and talk about what happened in the past and what they learned from it, what they went through. Because listen, if you go into that journey yourself and you're going to go to a, you have a vision and a target that you want to go to and you hit some hurdles, but you're watching other people, influencers and other successful people, and you never see the stuff that they went through, then you hit a tough spot. Somebody does something wrong to you. uh, You hit a hurdle. You get discouraged because you think this isn't supposed to happen. This is supposed to be smooth. I'm supposed to get to the top. I'm supposed to go and have successes stacked upon a success. No hurdles, no roadblocks. And that's wrong. And I'm here to tell you right now, I'm in a spot right now that I'm happy. I'm successful at at certain things. I'm not where I want to be yet. And my potential and my spirit is unlimited and I'm reaching hard right now. And I'm trying to bring my team along with me, reaching hard and anybody that works with me to reach as high as possible. However, I'm going to share with you my journey, my struggles, so that you know as I've been through where I've been through that it's normal. It happens. And then you got to ask yourself, what are you made of? What am I made of when you're going through those times? What kind of stuff did I go through in my past that I can use to propel me through this Or if things are starting to go great, how can I go to the next level? What do I got inside of me? And you know what? It doesn't even have to be what you're made of. It could be what somebody else is made of. And you saw that vision. You saw that story. You saw that journey. And you use those things in your own life. And that's what this is all about, guys. That's what this is all about. So I haven't decided yet if next week I'm going to do a podcast or not. Thanksgiving week. I think I still might. But uh, I'll let you know. But if I don't talk to you. Or if I don't have one, I want to wish you guys a great Thanksgiving. I'm thankful for all of you. I love all of you. appreciate you. And uh, I wish the best for you and your families for a safe holiday season. And thank you for coming in and hanging with your boy C-Rock. And we're just getting started, guys. This journey's just getting started. And uh, I'm going to make you all proud. I promise. Have a great day. 
Thank you for being a part of the What Are You Made Of podcast. So that you don't miss future episodes, please rate and subscribe to the What Are You Made Of podcast on your favorite listening or viewing apps and follow me on your favorite social media platforms. I would love to hear your stories and past experiences and engage with you further.